This morning, let's go to the book of Romans, chapter number 8. The book of Romans, chapter number 8. We have uh, been there a while now, and uh, not uh, near done yet, but uh, this morning we will return to Romans, chapter 8, and uh, continue our study on this particular subject. The subject this morning is verse number 14. Verse number 14, which says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We have said more than once that in the book of Romans chapter 8, the Holy Spirit is mentioned 20 times, and more than that, indirectly. Someone has well said about Romans 8, if you take the whole Bible and condense it down to one, one book, it'd be the book of Romans. If you take the book of Romans and condense it down to one chapter, it would be chapter 8. If you take the whole book of Romans, chapter 8, and condense it down to one verse, it would be Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Lord made you a great promise in John 14, 16. I will pray the Father, and he shall send you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. One of the great blessings of the Christian life, you have the Spirit of God literally dwelling inside of you. Now, while we've said a number of times that the Holy Spirit is mentioned so often, I just condensed, just in one, two, three word statements, I condensed what the Holy Spirit does in the life of a believer just out of this one chapter in the Bible. And I didn't even count, but let me just list them. The Holy Spirit saves us, frees us, delivers us, gives us the mind of Christ, dwells in us, gives us life, quickens us now and will later, helps us to fight sin, leads us, which is our subject this morning, assures our salvation, gives us hope for now and for eternity, seals us for the future, helps our infirmities, prays for us, teaches us to pray, searches our hearts, and comforts us. We do not have a full understanding of all the provision the Lord has made for us by giving us the ministry of the Holy Spirit to help our journey through this life. So our text this morning is only one verse, number 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. First of all, do we need that? Aren't we capable of living life as Christians on earth without divine help? The answer is an emphatic no. no. Jeremiah 10, 23 says, The way of man is not in him. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Now, I think that's rather plain, amen? We need the Lord to help us. We're faced with decisions all the time that we don't know what to do. There are some wonderful stories, true stories, and illustrations, true illustrations in the Bible about how the Lord leads us. Way back in the early pages of the Bible, uh, in Exodus and in the book of Numbers, when Moses was leading the children of Israel through the desert, can you imagine taking a couple of million slaves, that's all they've ever known, knew nothing else, uh, out of Egypt into a barren desert land where God told them to go, and Moses was to lead them <coughs> to the promised land. Uh, Moses was over 80, and uh, these two million Jews knew nothing, uh, were babies in their spiritual life. 
And how did God instruct Moses and how did he leave him? Well, if you'll read Numbers 9, verse 16 to 20, he guided them with a cloud by day. And by the way, that's the Shekinah glory cloud. In other words, he guided them himself. Amen. And at night with a light of fire which represented the glory of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. God, and, and, and how did he take care of them? It took ten box rail boxcar loads of manna every day of the week and since they weren't allowed to go out and gather manna on Saturday, on Friday it took 20 boxcar loads to feed them. For all those years, 38 years. And there's no water. We're talking real desert. I'm not talking about our kind of southwest desert. We're talking barren desert. Nothing. And when they needed water, I almost think God had a little sense of humor there. He could have just opened up the ground, but instead, he, he smote a rock. And out of, I mean, we're talking about giant boulder rock. Gushed, didn't trickle, gushed enough water to feed a couple of million, to, to, to give thirst, uh, uh, quench the thirst of a couple of million people. That is to teach us, now you don't need water out of a rock and you don't need 10 boxcar loads to feed you, but it, it's a wonderful illustration about how God does guide us through amen. this life. Yes, amen. And then I love the story of Ezra. Now Ezra was a priest, he was a soldier. And Ezra, after the Babylonian captivity, was told by God to restore the religious worship now Babylon had taken all the gold and the silver of Babylon and uh, so uh, the king gave to Ezra and his companions and his travel cohorts much of the gold and the silver and they were going to carry it back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple and establish worship. But the problem is this 300 mile journey with nothing but armed bandits in between. And Ezra got to thinking something like this. Here's what was going through Ezra's mind. He said, now, I'm going to carry all this gold and silver, and you got all these robbers and bands, and there's no days on earth I'm going to make it back safely. But I had told, I had witnessed to the king that our God can do anything, and it just seems to me like it would be kind of backsliding to go to the king and ask for soldiers. So he had a real dilemma. And so what he did about it, he prayed about it. And God said, I'll take care of you. And they carried all that gold and all that silver across three hundred miles of desert and nobody even came near him. And God led him. Praise God. And then I always like the story of the church at Antioch. Now the church at Antioch is the granddaddy of our mission, modern mission movement. And the story is in Acts chapter 13. And, and they needed to pick some men to send out on a mission journey. And they needed to know where to go. And they didn't know who to pick it. They didn't know where to go. And so in the first four verses of Acts chapter 13, they had a prayer meeting. And the Holy Spirit, now tell us how, but the Holy Spirit spoke to their hearts and said, send Barnabas and Paul. And then they kept on praying and, and God told them where to go. And they had another prayer meeting. They ordained them and they sent them. These stories are not in the Bible to entertain us, though they are thrilling stories. They are there to teach us they are an illustration of a truth. And that truth is in Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, Amen. they are the sons of God. Now, making right decisions 
is a problem. God said in Proverbs 20, 24, Many are the devices in the heart of a man, but the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. You remember Solomon, barely out of his teenage years, or he wasn't out of his teenage years, when he, when he, uh, uh, when David anointed him to be king, and he went to God and he said, "God, I am but a child." I don't know what to do. Give me wisdom. And God did. And he's the wisest man that ever lived. You see, the beginning of real guidance, the beginning of making good decisions is when we admit to ourselves and to God our inability. That's the beginning. I mean, look around the world today. Are people making good decisions? Less? I think I was here Friday. Driving home, I had my, from here to Dublin, I had my cruise set on 70. And a pickup went by me so fast, I never saw him coming, and I also saw his taillights when he went by. Was that man? Was well, that idiot making good decisions? I was going to the bus one the other morning to get my bus, and once you leave 377 and go down Harris, there are three stop signs. The minute I made my turn, there's a pickup came from the other direction, and he was on my bumper so close I couldn't see his headlights, so I just moved over. I don't think he ever saw any of those three stop signs. He blew through all three of them. Are people today making good decisions? No. Folks, you need the Lord. Amen. You need the Lord. But as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Well, how does the Lord guide us? Where does the Lord guide us? Let me say negatively and then positively. Negatively, the Lord, the Lord never guides us against what He's already put here. Amen. My favorite illustration is of young man, Christian young man, wants to marry a young lady. She's not a Christian. He says, God told me to marry her and I'll win her later. First of all, that rarely ever happens. It does happen, but it's pretty rare. But when God says don't, here... He's not going to say to you, do it. Right. And when God says in here, do that, He's not going to whisper in your ear, don't do that. Right. So negatively, God never guides against His Word. So how does God guide? Let me give you seven things. I don't see any pencils and pieces of paper coming out, except my wife. And this, <coughs> I'll settle with you. Okay, here we go. How does God guide, guide you? Number one, He's going to guide you in the way of peace. Luke 179, to guide our feet in the way of peace. That doesn't mean you don't sometimes go through tribulation. That doesn't mean we don't go through trials. But even in those trials, we can have the peace of God which passes all understanding. He guides us, He guides our feet in the way of peace. Number two, He guides us in Christian living. <clears throat> he does not guide you against the Bible. He does not guide you against what is right. He does not guide you against law. He guides you in Christian living. Psalms 32 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shouldest go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Do you realize as a Christian, God's eye is never off you? He always sees you. He always knows who you are. He always has a plan for your life. He guides you in Christian life. Number three, He does guide you in conflict. 
To say that when you became a Christian, you will never have trouble, the Bible does not say that. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, count the cross before you come to Christ, because there will be a cross sometimes. Count the cost. We must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. He will guide you in conflict. I want to go to 2 Chronicles chapter number 32. 2 Chronicles chapter number 32. King Hezekiah was facing a war with the Assyrian army ten times outnumbered. The people were afraid. And here's what Hezekiah said in 2 Chronicles 32, 22. 2 Chronicles 32. I'm not sure I have the right verse. I don't have the right verse. So I'll just quote it to you. He said, Many there be with us that be with them. When you have God on your side, you are you have the enemy outnumbered. Amen. Yes. All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. I am the Almighty God. I am the God of hosts. Jesus said, I could have called a myriad of angels if that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. In conflict, God is your guide. Number four, God is your guide in service. God is your guide in service. Psalm 73, 24, Thou wilt guide me with thy counsel. Thou wilt guide me with thy counsel. We that are in ministry are having a crisis of how to do and what to do. Most of what I was able to do to help build a church when I was a young man no longer works. Not just for me. Every preacher I know, every acquaintance I have in the ministry that I talk to has the same problem. All the things that we used to do to fill the building do not work anymore. And man has come in with a multitude of programs. First of all, I'm glad we can't afford any of those programs. Because people are finding out they don't even work anymore. Right. Now what will work is if you'll entertain them. If you'll entertain them and if you'll feed them, you can still have a crowd. I refuse to do that. If that's how you want to do it, just let me know. I'll be gone. You can get your clown. First of all, you've got enough of a clown up here. You really don't need another one. No, this is about worship and Bible study and prayer. Yes. Amen? Yes, amen. So, uh, and, and nothing is working anymore. Letters don't work anymore. Phone calls don't work anymore. Visitation doesn't work anymore. House to house canvassing doesn't work anymore. All the stuff we need doesn't work anymore. God will guide us in what works. At my age, I, I'm not saying it was right, but I've been a go-getter my whole life. I mean, I've been a workaholic in the ministry my whole life. Ten-hour days, twelve-hour days, knock doors, knock doors. Um, it's one of the more, more humbling, most humbling experience in my life that as an old man I can't do what I used to do because it's not working. Never had a problem until the last 10, 15 years. Never had a problem filling a church. People are just not responsive. Because you know how God wants us to fill this church? Number one, pray them in. And number two, somebody said to uh, Charles Hyde Spurgeon when he built the tabernacle after his enemies built, burned his church down and he built a 4,000 seat tabernacle and some of the men went to him and said, who's going to fill this place? 
Are you going to fill this place? Spurgeon said, no, my job is to fill the pulpit. Your job is to fill the church. Oops. Did I just go deaf? I didn't hear a single amen. I knew my ears were stopped. The Lord, you know what? We're forced, and I'm sorry that it has to get to that, but we're forced to wait on God, and that's a good thing. Okay? That's a good thing. Then God will guide you into His blessing. Isaiah 49. Let's see if I got this one right. Isaiah 49. God will, God will guide you in a blessed life. And you know, a Christian can be more blessed by God in trouble than an unbeliever can on top of the world. Have you ever thought about that? Isaiah 49, verse number 10. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall they eat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. God will lead you into his blessings. And then number six, God is going to lead you through all the seasons of your life. In every time, Isaiah 58, 11, the Lord shall guide thee continually. Continually. The Lord shall guide thee continually. Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He does all that by the Holy Spirit. And then this one pretty much sums them all up. God's going to lead you into all truth. God will lead you into his truth. John 16, 13. I will guide you into all truth. I will guide you into all truth. All of that in for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit in, and the Spirit will guide you. And I know that right now some people are going through tough stuff, and some people are going through sickness, and, and we're going to have thousands of Christians going through a terrible storm. And, and we've got thousands of Christians in Afghanistan that, uh, uh, that may face death because they helped us after we're gone. And we've got thousands of believers on the West Coast that this year, their homes have burned to cinder. But see, Christians don't necessarily need all the stuff out here as long as they've got the Lord in here. Amen. And the world doesn't understand that we can be at peace in the middle of the storm. You remember what Jesus did in the middle of the storm on the lake when the disciples were going nuts? He was taking a nap. And you could do that too. He will lead you at all times. Now, in closing, there will be two consequences to you submitting to the Lordship of Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead your every step in life. Number one, that's going to be for your good. It's going to be for your good. I am the Lord thy God, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, which teacheth thee the prophet, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou hast hearkened unto me, thy life would have been as a river of water. Isaiah 48, 17, and 18. It'll be for your good. God loves you. God cares for you. He never said you wouldn't have trouble. But he said, I will give you peace. In the world you're going to have tribulation, John 16, 33, but I will give you peace. Peace in the storm. God's leadership will be for your good. And secondly, and even more important, it will be for God's glory. John 16, 14. He will glorify me, God said about his son, and the son later on says about us. You know, we Christians, and I probably need to qualify this a little bit, but 
But we're not, as Christians on earth, after we get saved, we're not here to be rich and famous. Now, you may have both. But primarily, you're here to be light and salt to a dying society, and you're to glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And all of that will be in its proper place at its proper time if you as a believer are submitted to and are being led by the Spirit of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. 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 Would you stand with us? Is every head bowed? I closed. I know there has been a sober and serious side to our service this morning because of the many terrible things and disasters that are going on right now, not only around the world, but in our own country. But folks, we need to keep our eyes on the Lord. We need to keep praying. We need to keep the faith. We need to live the Christian life out there. And we need to trust God. We need to keep trusting God no matter what. May God give you the grace, the mercy, the peace, and the strength to live that life this week. Our precious Heavenly Father, we come before your throne to thank you for being the Lord of our life. And Lord, we have the assurance and the, uh, and the comfort of the Word of God and the, the comfort of the Holy Spirit that you're in charge. It looks bad to us sometimes, but nothing is ever out of your control. And we trust you. We don't understand, but we trust you. We walk by faith. We know that we are here in this time, through these circumstances, by your design. And by your plan, and you have a good plan for our lives, lead us, I pray. And Lord, as we live our lives this week, let, let, help us to let our light shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. This I ask, this I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We're going to sing number 124. Number 124. If you need to make profession of faith, if you need prayer, if you want to join the church, whatever... Whatever God is speaking to your heart, this is your time to respond as we sing.